Hey guys, it is Miss Holly here today for 1980 Storytime for the library's 100th birthday. So without further ado, let's get started with our hello song. All right, so our hello song. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at Storytime, we clap and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With our friends at Storytime, we wave and sing hello. We stop and sing hello. We stop and sing hello. With our friends at Storytime, we stop and sing hello. All right, let's read a book. This book is called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and it is by Laura Joff Neumerhoff, and it was illustrated by Felicia Bond, published in 1985. So if you give a mouse a cookie, He's gonna ask for a glass of milk. And when you give him a glass of milk, he'll probably ask you for a straw. Then when he's finished, he'll ask for a napkin. Then he'll want to look in the mirror and make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. When he looks in that mirror, he might notice his hair needs a trim. So he'll probably ask for a pair of nail scissors. When he's finished giving himself a trim, he'll want a broom to sweep up. He'll start sweeping. He might even get carried away and sweep every room in the house. He may even end up washing all the floors as well. When he's done, he'll probably want to take a nap. You'll have to fix up a little box for him with a blanket and a pillow. He'll crawl in, make himself comfortable, and fluff the pillow a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a story. So you read to him from one of your books, and he'll ask to see the pictures. When he looks at the pictures, he'll get so excited he'll want to draw one of his own, so he'll ask you for paper and crayons. He'll draw a picture. When the picture's finished, he'll want to sign his name. With a pen. Then he'll want to hang his picture on your refrigerator, which means he will need scotch tape. He'll hang up his drawing and stand back to look at it. Looking at the refrigerator will remind him that he's thirsty. So he'll ask for a glass of milk. And chances are, if he asks for a glass of milk, what do you think he's going to want with that milk? He's gonna want a cookie to go with it. And that is the end of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. All right, so we're gonna do a little rhyme called Little Clapping Mouse. There's a lot of mice in our books today, so. Behind the tree and under the house, there lived a teeny tiny mouse. She loved to sing. She loved to tap. Most of all, she loved to clap. She clapped all night, she clapped all day. She clapped to frighten the cat away. Oh my gosh. We scared the cat away. Let's do it one more time. Behind the tree and under the house, there lived a teeny. Tiny mouse. She loved to sing. She loved to tap. Most of all, she loved to clap. She clapped all day. She clapped all night. She clapped to frighten the cat away. Good job. I think you scared the cat away. So let's let's read a book. 
This book is called Mouse Paint and it is by Ellen Stoll Walsh. So let's get started. It was published in 1989, if anyone is curious. So once upon a time, there were three white mice on a white piece of paper. The cat couldn't find them. Can you find them, the mice? Right over here. One day, while the cat was asleep, the mice saw three jars of paint, one red, one yellow, and one blue. Red, yellow, blue. They thought it was mouse paint. They climbed right in. Then one was red, one was yellow, and one was blue. They dripped puddles of paint onto the paper. The puddles looked like fun. Red Mouse stepped into a yellow puddle and did a little dance. His red feet stirred the yellow puddle until... Do you guys know what happens when red mixes with yellow? Look, he cried, red feet in a yellow puddle makes orange. Yellow Mouse hopped into a blue puddle. His feet mixed and stirred and stirred and mixed until, what does yellow and blue make? Down, said the red mouse and the blue mouse. Yellow feet in a blue puddle makes green. And the blue mouse jumped into the red puddle. He splashed and mixed and danced until, Purple, they all shouted. Blue feet in a red puddle makes purple. But the paint on their fur got sticky and stiff, so they washed themselves down to get nice, soft, white again. Taking a bath in the cat dish. And they painted the paper instead. They painted one part red, right over here, and one part here yellow, and one part was blue. And they mixed red and yellow to paint an orange part over here, and yellow and blue to paint a green part, and blue and red to paint a purple part over here. But they left some white because of the cake. And that is the end of mouse paint. All right, so now we are going to do a flannel board story called Animals Should Definitely Not Wear Clothing. That is by Judy Barrett. So animals, as we know, should definitely not wear clothing because it would be disastrous for a, a porcupine, a porcupine and a sweater because a camel might wear it in the wrong places. Two hats on, on the camel's back. And a snake would, would lose it. Clothes would fall right off. Uh, because a mouse, a mouse would get lost, I think. Do you see the mouse? The little feet, he got lost in the hat. And a sheep might just find it terribly hot because as we know, wool comes from a sheep. So sheeps are already wearing clothes. What else? It would be, it would just be very messy for a pig, I think. And it might make life just a little bit hard for a hen. Look at this crazy hen, and a kangaroo would just find it quite unnecessary. But a giraffe would probably just look sort of silly. This giraffe's got like four ties on, four of them. And a billy goat, a billy goat would just eat the clothes for lunch. And, you know, it would always be wet on a walrus. 
And because a moose could never manage, because opossums, they might wear their clothes upside down by mistake. And because the biggest reason of all is it would be very embarrassing. They're wearing the same dress, very embarrassing. And that is why animals should just definitely not wear clothing. Well, this book is for all my gardener friends out there. This is called Planting a Rainbow by Lois Ellert and it came out in 1988. So every year, mom and I plant a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. Orange tiger lilies, red tulips, orange tulips, yellow daffodils, blue hyacinth, blue crocus, or purple crocus, <laughs> and purple bearded iris rhizome. All these different flowers. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long. For spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. They're all growing now, all these bulbs. Then it's time to go to the garden center to select some seedlings. Get a rose, poppy, a fern. We sow the seeds and set out the plants in soil. Watch the rainbow grow. Look at all these plants. So many different colors. And grow. And grow. We have some red flowers here. And some orange flowers. And some yellow blooms. We grow something green and some blue flowers too. And then some purple flowers too, some of those. All summer long, we pick them, bring them home. When summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. And that is the end of Planting the Rainbow. All right, we're going to do a song now, and it is called Gur Gur Went the Big Brown Bear. Gur Gur went the big brown bear one day. Gur Gur went the big brown bear. Gur Gur went the big brown bear one day, and they all went gur gur gur. But we know bears go huggy huggy hug huggy huggy hug huggy huggy hug we know bears go huggy huggy hug they don't go gur 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 slow slow went the little green turtle one day slow slow went the little green turtle Slow, slow went the little green turtle one day, and they all went slow, slow, slow. But we know turtles go, cowabunga dude, cowabunga dude, cowabunga dude. We know that turtles go, cowabunga dude, they don't go slow, slow, slow. All right, so this one is one of my favorite books from 1989. It is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, and it is by John Skiza, illustrated by Lane Smith. So everyone knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has heard my side of the story. And there's no pictures. It's not that fun. Not yet. But I am the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. 
Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheeps and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home with the cup without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. You know what? The whole darn straw house just fell right down. Right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger, just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not by much. He built his house of sticks. So I ran the bell on the stick house. No one answered, so I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt Another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not gonna believe it, but the guy's house fell down, just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open, so I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was already getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better, so and since I didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake, I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's other brother. He must have been the brains of the family because he built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house, no answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf, don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. And the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like that, I go crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Like this. The rest, they say, is history. The big bad wolf.
The news reporters found out about the two big pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar wasn't very exciting. So they jazzed up their story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. And that's it, that's the real story. I was framed. <laughs> but maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? And that is the end of the true story of the three little pigs. All right, so what else were kids reading in the 1980s? Well, there's one book I did not include in story time just because we ran out of time, but we're going on a bear hunt. It was published in the 80s. And you might be familiar with this picture book as well. It is by Jan Brett, The Mitten. And another series that started to come out in the 80s and then just kept coming out was the Berenstain Bears. And then we have the Smurfs here, My Little Pony, big trends in the 80s. And with the chapter books for older kids, we have Matilda, we have Dicey's Song, we have by Miss Beverly Cleary, Socks. And then by Lois Lowry, we have Number the Stars, and Gary Paulson came out with Hatchet. Like oldie but a goodie, we've got the Babysitter's Club, Kiki's Delivery Service, the Choose Your Own Adventure books, that came out in the 80s, and those just kept going. And another classic, had a lot of controversy, scary stories to tell in the dark. So that is what kids were reading in the 1980s. We clap goodbye like this. We clap goodbye like this with our friends at story time. We clap goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this with our friends at story time. We wave goodbye like this. We stomp goodbye like this. We stomp goodbye like this with our friends at story time. We stomp goodbye like this. All right, guys, thanks for coming to my special 1980s story time for the library's 100th birthday. Um, I will see you next month for the 1990s story time. Bye.